Let me introduce myself by introducing one of my philosophies about playing with and learning new technologies. Technology support karma. However, understanding the philosophy of technology support karma implies that you already understand the technology philosophy no geek in the garret. The no geek in the garret philosophy is the truth that no serious computer programmer or digital compositionist writes alone in the garret or in his or her mother's basement. The no geek in the garret philosophy is really about building your support network, a network of different people, websites, books, etc. Once you have your technology support network, which of course you should always be adding to, you realize that there are certain people you go to a lot because they really know a lot more than you do, and rarely do they ever ask you for anything in return. Or, if they do, it's something like, hey, proofread this email before I send it out to the college. This leads you back to the technology support karma philosophy. In short, to make sure you can find and get technological assistance when you need it, you need to build up your technology support karma points. As a way to continue building my technology support karma points, as well as my no geek in the Garrett support group, I started facilitating professional development events, both face-to-face -face and online. I also started a geek group called Cyber Salon. Today, I'll tell you about both of these activities. One place to conduct professional development workshops is at conferences. Not only do these events add to your technology support karma points, they also contribute to your CV and connect the facilitators with other folks interested in the same topic. And don't be surprised, people who know just as much, or even more, than you on the topic attend your workshop to get a chance to chat as well as continue to build their own No Geek in the Garrett support group. Another place to share what you know is by conducting workshops at home. Usually people in your own department, as well as others outside the department, want to know how to use the cool technology, especially if it helps with their own teaching or research. Also check with your institution's office for teaching and learning. I sincerely appreciated the connections I've made with faculty who teach in different disciplines. More often than not, they give me a different insight into how and why I might use any given application. For example, after spending a year as instructional technologist, the math faculty drilled in me to always ask, what about the equation editor? Finally, I also offered webinars that were open both to the local populations as well as people at a distance. I was very bummed when Blackboard purchased Illuminate and then shut down Illuminate's Learn Central, a faculty professional development social network and webinar hosting service. Based on events I conducted through Learn Central, I still have faculty from across the country and a variety of disciplines invite me to facilitate, usually paid, professional development events for them. By facilitating various professional development events, you not only set yourself up as an expert in the topic, you also build a rich network of people who you can call on for a variety of things beyond a cry for technology help. This suggestion of facilitating professional development events to grow your own professional identity, your No Geek in the Garrett support group, as well as your technology support karma points, is not new. If you look closely at the careers of big names in the computers and composition field, you can see that a lot of them have not only been productive researchers and scholars, but also share their expertise in more practical ways through various professional development types of events. However, I'll also say that you should do this because you love it, or you love what you're talking about so much you just have to share it. Don't feel resentful about losing your time while sharing with your colleagues. If you love what you're sharing, you'll enjoy the time sharing it. Where I think I've done something a little unique, or at least unique to people in computers and writing, because salons have a long, rich scholarly history already, I started Cyber Salon almost five years ago. I had to look up the history of the Google group to verify. Wow, five years. So, almost five years ago, I started a group called Cyber Salon. My idea was to meet once a month in a place that had food, alcohol, and free Wi-Fi. I started by emailing a bunch of my colleagues who teach with technology at the Maricopa Community College District, as well as a few others in the Phoenix area, especially at Arizona State University. And Susan, I had to let my partner in scholarly crime know what I was up to. And I said, hey, I'm doing a geeky happy hour. Join me to chat about teaching with technology. Almost five years later, the group has rarely missed a month, even since I moved to Virginia. Coop is known for hosting a summer pool party salon. Once we had B-Ride lead a DDR session. Alan has come in online from various locations around the country, and the holiday white elephant party has become its own legend. The supporting Google group has become its own resource and entity for members. Some never come to the face-to-face -face sessions and are only active online. Since some of my colleagues have reported out at a few conferences, I can even share a little bit of data we've collected about the group. In our second batch of collecting data, you're looking at a beautiful poster from the first batch. In the second batch, 89% of the participants, both online and face-to-face, -face, consider CyberSalon a form of professional development. And although almost 40% of the participants only lurk, and 30% say they only minimally participate, 81% categorize themselves as consumers who, quote, read and use and apply information gleaned from the group. But really, you want the qualitative stuff. 
When asked how Cyber Salon is different from normal professional development activities, participants said things like, quote, it is more current and more fluid. Training sessions can be canned. Cyber Salon provides a platform for learning and sharing in a more customized manner. Quote, it is community organized and has no overarching agenda except to be safe and a useful environment. There is no bureaucracy. Quote, entirely informal but important part of current awareness, like reading professional literature but in casual, non-pretentious, and frank vocabulary. End quote. The group who met together seemed to have closely bonded. I think this is important when sharing information because people tend to pay attention to new ideas when they come from someone you like, trust, and value. Care of Todd Conaway, Cyber Salon has spread up to Payson, Arizona, and now that I'm staying in Virginia and Alan is hanging out in Virginia for another year, plus both B. Ryan and Susan live in North Carolina, we're starting up Max, the Mid-Atlantic Cyber Salon. The first meeting of Max will be an alternative to the baseball game at the upcoming Computers and Writing Conference in Raleigh. Sorry, I'm not a big baseball fan. However, it will be near the ballpark for those of you who might want to do both. With Cyber Salon, I've exponentially grown both my No Geek in the Garrett support group as well as my pile of technology support karma points. The Listserv, which started to plan the events and now has its own social support network, has grown with members all over the U.S. Who knows? Maybe someone out of the country. I've worked with these folks on projects, grants, conference presentations, and scholarly publications. Cyber Salon meetings are not just professional networking. They are where I hang out with my friends. Indeed, some of these folks have become very close friends. I'll end with an anecdote. Five years ago, I invited both Elisa Cooper and B. Rye Alsack to Cyber Salon. They did not know each other. This past April, Coop officiated at B. Rye's wedding. They planned the ceremony using Google Docs and read from an Android tablet. Forget about professional development. Building positive support networks is just plain old living a positive life.